and welcome to our brand new podcast series, Decade of Excellence, Reimagining Human Health. Through this series, we'll be celebrating the 10th anniversary of our bioengineering department here at the University of Texas at Dallas. My name is Shalini Prasad and I am the department head for the bioengineering department. Welcome back, everyone, to a new episode of the Decade of Excellence, Reimagining Human Health. My guest today is Mr. Jorge Varela, who is the president and CEO of BioNorth Texas. BioNorth Texas works to connect, promote, and advance biotech and healthcare in the North Texas area so as to grow the life sciences industry and add value to the healthcare system and build a strong and healthy community. So with this, Jorge, welcome. Uh, so let's get started. Please tell us a little bit about BioNorth Texas. What is it and what is the value to us in being in the North Texas area? Thank you for having me, Shalini. It's so good to be here today. BioNorth Texas was started back in uh, 2013. It's a member-led organization with individuals who have a common interest of furthering the biosciences in North Texas. The members are a diverse group. They come from industries that either heal, feed, or fuel, or conserve the world. And it is made up of a core family of about 3,000-plus individuals and 100-plus organizations, uh, all who work and support or who otherwise have interest in the bioscience industry in North Texas. The reason we were created was, in essence, to provide a forum for the North Texas bio community to connect collaborate, and to share efforts in promoting local business and resources. Our why, what we like to say the, the, our purpose is, is that we believe that a robust bioscience and healthcare industry in North Texas really contributes to the improvement of lives as evidenced in healthier populations and in economic growth um, through more jobs and, and through commerce. So that's, that's who we are and what we bring to the conversation in the bio industry in North Texas. That is great. And to many of our listeners, this is probably the first introduction to BioNot Texas. So could you maybe give us some examples of the kinds of partnerships that you foster through this BioNot Texas organization? Sure. Um, you know, our, our board members like to say that BioNot Texas is like a, a watering hole, if you will, in the middle of the uh, a bio town center in North Texas. So we connect all different types of organizations to the resources they need for success. We connect individuals to uh, network and further their careers, um, startups with capital resources, and the economic development institutions to the belly of the industry, you know, what you need to to move the industry forward. The kind of partnerships that we look for are are very diverse. It could be in working with uh, the universities themselves and trying to help them. Um, move their interests forward, which are typically in the commercialization of of technology or in the development of uh, employment opportunities for their uh, recent graduates or for their researchers even. Um, so those are the type of what we do for the universities. In industry, um, we can call it as it is. Industry really is looking for, for business growth. And so those companies are looking for opportunities to connect with potential clients to find talent, find capital. And, and when it comes to the individuals, like I said, we're really working to further their professional uh, aspirations. It's a very diverse group of individuals and organizations, all who have one, one common theme, which is you know they're looking to, to further the, the bioscience community in some way, shape, or form. We also have what we call associate members, and those are companies, uh, professional service companies, producers of lab equipment, et cetera, Uh, And they are there to service the bio organizations. In total, like I said, we have about 3,000 plus um, individuals in the community and about uh, 100, 125 uh, organizations. And uh, so those are the type of partners that we have. You've said so many interesting things. I think the big thing that I heard is this is an opportunity to professionally network if I were an individual. So bioengineering here at UT Dallas is the third largest bioengineering program in the country. So our greatest asset that we have are our students. So if I'm a student, how would I go about joining BioNorth Texas? 
Students um, and everyone can join by going to the Bio North Texas website, bioNTX.org, and choose member resources and join. Students have a, a special place in our heart because we, we see them as the, one of the key reasons why we created uh, Bio North Texas. There were uh, other organizations provided by North Texas, but our founders felt that uh, there had to be a way to stop the brain drain and the talent leaving the area. Uh, and so that was one of the charters of the Bionore Texas organization. We initially, and, and we're about to restart, having uh, opportunities for students to volunteer. So they should, they should go to the website and uh, sign up. And hopefully if they, I don't know when the podcast is being broadcast, but if they if they sign up, there will be an option to volunteer and get to know. Students are, are a special case to us. We, we try to, to foster them as best we can um, in, in helping them move forward in their careers. Yes. So I think you've said something very interesting, right? So this is an opportunity, especially for students to getting to know, and you would work as a very nice support system. And that's always good to know, especially in these tough times, having a support system. Uh, so along the same lines, uh, there is a lot of entrepreneurship in UT Dallas and more so in bioengineering. So using BioNot Texas, are there ways to facilitate collaborations among universities and industry? A very good question. We think there is, and I believe that uh, everyone in the community does. Universities and colleges as a whole are foundational to the purpose and mission of BioNot Texas. The biosciences, as you well know, rely heavily on on scientific research and discoveries, and, and the industry needs quality talent. And with universities like uh, UT Dallas and UT Arlington, with their rich engineering heritage, and with UT Southwestern's prominence in the health sciences, you have the, the perfect element for a robust bioscience uh, community. At, at BioNorth Texas, we work constantly to promote the universities and colleges and the talent and, and the innovation they produce, right? In fact, a huge contributor to the formation of BioNorth Texas, like I said, was that constant talent and technology drain on our local economy. We just, you know, it, it got to the point where the founders of the organization, all of whom are still involved with the organization, felt we, we can't let it continue to happen. So specifically, we tend to work more with the Office of Technology Commercialization from the local universities to promote their commercialization events. We work with the placement offices to promote jobs and opportunities in, in the North Texas region. And of course, the universities are a large part of IC3 conference. That's our annual uh, conference that we hold. In fact, uh, when we created IC3, I remember clearly I was on the board at the time. And one of the C's is, is commercialization of technology at the universities. I mean, it's, it's paramount to the success of the, the biotech industry, or bioscience industry. In fact, at the IC3 conference, we, we typically feature startups with, with university technology in the rising star segment of, of the conference. Uh, Cersei, which was founded by Dr. Lucas Rodriguez, so was, was featured in 2019 and uh, and was acquired in 2020. That was you know, our partnership with UT Dallas created that that relationship from the start. I remember first meeting uh, Lucas uh, sometime back. I, I want to say maybe 2016, uh, 2015, when he was launching the company. He was looking to connect with investors, and and we had some some great conversations and, and some meetings and. You know, I, I offered some advice. I, I don't know if he took it or not. Um, but but then he went on and he was part of a poster event at the IC3 conference in 2017, I believe. And, and then a few years later, the, 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 the committee selected Cersei as a rising star. And then the next thing you know, you know, they get acquired. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful story uh, because it, it actually shows how our connections with the universities have resulted in these great stories. Um, and, and there are other companies and other startups like Cersei that started within a university that we can tell, you know, Uncle Conano is one of those. Um, I, I can keep going on and on, but don't want to bore everyone with those facts. That's truly an exciting story. And I'm really hoping that we'll have many more to tell as we build our relationship with BioNorth Texas. Uh, now pivoting a little bit to think about biomedical engineering specifically, what do you see as the future of biomedical engineering here in North Texas, especially in the context of perhaps what the pandemic has done to us and how our thinking has maybe evolved thinking about biomedical engineering? So, you know, that's the exciting part of, of the bio community in North Texas. I, I personally, uh, I'm not a, a scientist. 
Um, I actually you know, started in engineering and, and eventually ended up with a degree in, in uh, political economy. Um, and, and to be in the bio community now, I mean, I, I think that, you know, I am, I am blessed in, in having that opportunity because I have seen the growth in, in the last seven years or so, eight years now, probably close to nine in the biosciences uh, and, and in particular in the last like five years or so to the, the point that North Texas is now leading other regions in the States and IPOs and M&As in the past uh, three years or so for the bioscience industry. Just to say that again, in a different way, you know, North Texas has been leading the state in IPOs and M&As in the past three years for companies that have gone public or that have been acquired more than Houston, more than Austin in the biosciences. We hear Taisha Therapeutics going public in less than a year, setting a new record for a biotech company to go from Series A funding to IPO in less than a year. And that was technology and, and technologies that came out of UT Southwestern. We're seeing this, this exciting time in North Texas. But I think that we have yet to really tap the true competitive advantage of the region. Right. Think of it. We have universities that are steep in computer technology, such as UT Dallas and UT Arlington, with great bioengineering programs. Right. Excellent programs recognized, uh, especially in case of UT Dallas, it's, it's recognized worldwide as one of the top engineering programs um, and as a whole in bioengineering specifically. And then we have UT Southwestern, one of the leading research universities in the country in regard to the biosciences. The collaborations that these three institutions really have started to drive and put together, drive leading edge research and develop to Mars professionals, which will, to me, yield a renaissance in technology in North Texas. Companies like Texas Instruments and AT&T in the tech industry that are amazing companies. And as they pivot to be more in the bioscience industry, you'll see a significant growth in the need of cross-disciplinary skills, such as those of the biomedical engineer, right? We have talent in North Texas. I mean, that's, I, I think that's what I'm trying to say in a nutshell. We have talent to the point that in, in December, I, I moderated a panel with leadership from Riata Pharmaceuticals and Alcon, and they both mentioned the quality of talent in the area and said that talent was one of the reasons they have not considered leaving the area. To us, that's a huge win because we want those, those companies to stay in there and drive economic growth, but we also want them to create jobs and, and you know, create new therapies, create new solutions. So that's a big win for us. In fact, the Alcon executive went on so far to say that the demand that they have was, was so great that they were stealing chemists and engineers from the oil and gas industry. And if you think of that, you're like, well, how, how could that be that you're stealing those, that talent from the oil and gas industry? And, and their answer was, was simple. The oil and gas industry has the biomedical engineers, has the bio and the, med and the uh, engineers, let's, let's put it that way. And they can utilize that in, in in developing new technologies. And you sit and you go, well, Alcon, isn't that eye drops? No, it's not just eye drops. There's new optic lenses. Um, some of those lenses are being controlled with computers and sensors. This is a, a, a new world we live in, right? You can no longer separate um, engineering and, and the, the bio world. They're, they're one and the same. But in North Texas, going back to that question, we're, we're riding a wave of success in therapeutic companies right now, right? Companies like Peloton, Tasha. ZS Pharma, you know, Encore Vision, all those companies, Cersei, all those companies have been acquired of late or gone public. Those, those are all been focusing heavily in, in, in therapeutics. But I think the next wave will be those, that, those companies that capitalize on the cross-disciplinary expertise of biomedical engineers to develop targeted therapies, develop new materials and products and treatment of disease, to use data to improve efficacy of drugs, to develop robotic technology, and we can go on, right? That new, if you will, discipline is going to make a difference in, in, in North Texas. I truly believe that North Texas has a huge advantage over other regions because of the universities and the tech industry in this area, because of the TIs, because of the UTD, because of AT&T, UT Southwest, and all that comes together um, to create this new, new thing, right? That to this day, we don't really have a biomedical engineering industry per se. What we have are biomedical engineers that are plugged in to solve problems in different industries. And I think that, that that is what the future of biomedical engineering is in North Texas. It's this synergy, this mixing of tech and science. It's gonna be fun, uh, it's exciting. I'm glad I'm, I'm a part of it right now.
I agree with you. It's going to be fun and it is going to be exciting. So I'm going to now ask you to maybe like look into your crystal ball, uh, more so in terms of what you understand and what you see, you know, as the changing winds of uh, how things are positioning themselves for biomedical engineering or biotech industry, broadly speaking. How would you see the North Texas area being positioned vis-a-vis the country, right? Nationally, what will be our visibility? Where are we now? And as you articulated, the growth is significant. So where do you envision us perhaps five years from now? You know, it's it's hard always to look in a crystal ball and predict stuff, right? People get in trouble for making those predictions. Um, so that's, that's a tough question. And like I said, part of that problem in, in answering this question is, you know, the biomedical engineering industry is still not recognized as a, as a solid industry as such. And, and biomedical engineers themselves find work in pharmaceutical, medical devices, manufacturing, robotics, you know, all over, um, all these other industries. But but if we were to 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 try to consolidate it and say, well, where do we see the bio uh, industry as a whole, which is something I could, can probably better answer. Um, actually going to cheat but as I think about this because I was panel with one of the leadership individuals at BIO, the International Bioscience Innovation Organization, back in December. And, and he stated uh, that Texas is now, uh, according to the research and the studies that they have done, the second fastest growing state in the biosciences, only behind California. That um, And it was funny because earlier in the year I was on a different panel with the same gentleman and he said that we were close. It was a close tie between us and Massachusetts in the second place. By December, he he said the numbers had shown that we had taken the second position um, only behind California. Number three was uh, Massachusetts, and number four was uh, a combination of New York, New Jersey area, uh, who individually would not have been that high. So that's exciting news, right? That's, that's incredibly exciting news. We see things like McKesson moving their headquarters to North Texas. I mean, why, why did they do that? And if you, if you hear uh, the, the CEO speak, it's simply because all the, right, all the right elements are here for them to grow. And this whole new wave of biologistics with the DFW airport investing in, in uh, biologistics and everything, you know, trying to create what they call the, the new bio Silk Road um, to facilitate the production and shipment of drugs and, and basically of any biologistic worldwide. They're investing significant capital into that. So we have the manufacturing is kind of light. We have the logistics. We have the sciences that have come up. And we have lately uh, biolabs opening their first labs outside of the traditionally recognized areas of, you know, the east and west coast, right? That was a huge win for the North Texas region when, when they said, look, we are choosing North Texas as our first inland, if you will, for our, our labs. Not Austin, not Houston, but North Texas. That that is that is big news, right? And they did significant studies. They 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 had options to go different places. They had uh, funding to go different places, and and yet they chose us. Uh, and and if you hear them say it, it's because we have all the right elements for the for them to to be here. And and with them, of course, they came. They're coming into Pegasus Park, which is the innovation center that's coming online in late 2021. Pegasus Park is is already attracting all the right elements for the explosion of the life science community, right? They have they've got the capital. They've got, of course, biolabs there. Uh, a lot of the experts are opening offices there. So you have the VC people opening offices there. Uh, you have the, the lab places there. You have mentors there. You have you know, companies that, that are co-locating there. That's exciting news. And according to a study that, that was, was done by the, the CTIA, DFW is number two in the country for tech hires. So this is where I'm trying to blend in the idea of the bio and the tech, because if we're number two in the country for tech hires, and that's in the country, that's not just in, 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 in Texas, then uh, there's a reason why that growth is happening. There's a reason why those hires are happening. And, and to me, I, I think it's leading towards a bioscience industry, not because I'm biased bio, uh, because I am, you know, in, in business, which is what I did prior to now. I was a techie. I started tech companies that went public. And, you know, so I'm a techie, but I'm, I'm feeling it's the bio that's driving this, this conversation. I took a peek at this for another panel I was speaking on, um, you know, to try to understand, well, what, what does the U.S. labor statistics say about growth in, in biomedical engineering? And, and they're projecting that biomedical engineers will grow by 12% by 2028 in Texas, right? 
that's a big number. You may say, well, 12% doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, anything over 5% is usually considered a lot. So if we're growing 12% by 2028, that's a significant growth in biomedical engineers in North Texas. So I feel confident in saying that I, I believe that North Texas will be in the, the top echelons of the bioscience industry within the next five to seven years. I, I actually feel that we are we're getting there. Um, every day I get you know more and more individuals relocating here, um, excited about you know what's happening in Texas. I, I had a conversation just this morning with uh, I, I can't say exactly what 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 they do where they're from, but let's just say it's a recognized executive at. Uh, one of uh, a similar organization to ours in one of the coasts. And they're saying, hey, I, w- I want to come down there and be with you guys. Things are happening where you guys are, are at. That tells me that, that we're already um, being recognized for the biosciences. We think that this is the right time, the right place. And we just want to make sure that we're here to help any organization that we can move their vision forward. Uh, as long as it aligns with with our goal of of developing a robust life science community uh, in North Texas and and to improve lives by doing that, so that's that's what my projection is, and I I, I feel confident in in making that statement. You've painted a really exciting picture for all of us, Jorge. So I mean, it's really awesome that you're all living in the North Texas area, and for the future, we can welcome a lot more folks who are like-minded to us who would come out here. So I wanted to thank you for uh, you know spending this time and kind of sharing your thoughts and chatting with me about uh, what the value proposition is for us in the biomed biotech space is for being in the North Texas area. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shalini, and thank you for your work at UT Dallas. The successes we've seen in just the first 10 years are, are great. Imagine what it will look like. 10 years from now. So I hope to be around and, and be involved to, to congratulate not just 10 years, but 20 years, 30 years of, of the work that you're doing and that UT Dallas is doing. Thank you very much. 